This is Majesty's Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. Thank you for taking some of your valuable time to spend it with us. I wanted to say a quick thank you to each and every one of you. If you didn't make it to the very end of of the last episode, um, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to wish me a happy birthday. Thank you for all the wonderful messages. Thank you for the emails that I got. Thank you for the super stickers in general. And just thank you. I am blessed to wake up and have another day. I am so blessed. And I thank the universe. I thank God for giving me the life that I've got and for each day to breathe into me breath so I can have another day. And thank you, each and every one of you. So the new theme for this cycle of abuse towards Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex from the unhinged British media, is to cast her as a bad decision maker, someone incapable of making the right choices. And they arrived to this new abusive qualifier because of desperation, really, and a red dress. They continue on this campaign to make sure that the history books will reflect and describe Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, with a plethora of negatives. For the past eight years, the British media has maintained an almost relentless fixation on Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, casting her in a negative light irrespective of her actions or words. This scrutiny isn't random or circumstantial. It follows a predictable pattern designed to villainize her, creating a kind of media playbook that cycles through targeted narratives. Each story seemingly originates with a single unverified comment, often from a royal commentator or royal insider or a friend of a friend, which quickly transforms into a full-scale media assault. This pattern illustrates the lengths to which the media will go in sustaining coverage while paradoxically criticizing Megan's omnipresence, a presence they themselves manufactured, a theme carefully chosen to resonate with long standing stereotypes is introduced, leading to an avalanche of articles and opinion pieces that reinforce the same messaging. Past themes have labeled Megan a bossy, bully, angry black woman. Each each theme runs until it loses public traction, at which point a new angle emerges. Most recently, the British media seized on the idea that Megan is a bad decision maker. So we're hearing a lot of that lately. A critique that unfolded following her appearance in a repurposed red dress. Yes, it's the Carolina Herrera dress that she wore at the charity event in Los Angeles for Children Healthcare. Now you see, with no advance notice of her attendance and the really great positive reception and media coverage that she received, 
Now they needed to do something. The media in the UK needed to find a way to make sure that the experience that she was having needed to be negative. So, the media pivoted to criticize the dress itself once they found out that actually Megan did not crash this event. She was invited by the CEO. One of the headlines that they went with was that um, Meghan Markle was just there for photography, for publicity, for her to just take pictures, and then she left. She didn't stick a rug at all. As a matter of fact, if that was something that she just did, that would still be okay. Because some artists, some entertainers, some people in the public eye are invited to these charity events and they show up, they take pictures and then they will leave. Because the important part is that they're there to take the pictures so that the charity will get more publicity. So even if she just had done that, it still would have been okay. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But they did try several other themes and it didn't seem to work. Then a, they started to test out. Um, one one um, headline said, Meghan Markle stuns in red hot dress for a su surprise visit to the Children's Hospital in LA. The other headline reads, Royal fans issue the same complaint um, of Meghan Markle's dress. Her recent outfit did not seem appropriate for a royal to be wearing. Okay. Meghan Markle's surprise visit sparks criticism over her outfit, which was absolutely inappropriate for a charity event. And then let me see, I think there's one more here. New photos reveal a shocking um, outfit that Meghan Markle wore. So the whole idea that the gown now was inappropriate started to get a lot more traction than the other headlines. So that then, it was easy for them to convert that into Oh well, you know, she she's she's not she doesn't know how to make good decisions. She's not a good judge of of character, of of reading the room, of even understanding what would be the right um fashion to wear at a charity event. <laughs> Oi, these people. A week or so ago, or perhaps two weeks ago, Richard that person just out of nowhere on that show that he's he's part of to prove a point he said well I just want to bring up something do you remember during COVID when when uh, Megan and Harry were in New York and they were going to this like this school this 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 impoverished school where everyone who, who attended this school were very, very poor. I mean, if the man continued to describe the school and the children any any more than he did, I would I would have assumed that these 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 were children on the cusp of of death, depending on how he was describing how how poor they were and and how poverty um, was around their neighborhood. So his critique was. Megan wore an outfit that was designer and thousands upon thousands upon hundreds of thousands of dollars that it cost. And he goes, you know, it just goes to show she has no judgment. She doesn't understand. Her judgment is just, it's always been wrong. Now he brings that up. And this is what, as I said, it was actually, it was more, more than a year ago, maybe perhaps two, two and a half years ago. And he brings it up now about her bad judgment about an outfit that she wore to, 
to a school. So this is what I'm trying to show, right? This is what they do. They pick a theme and you'll see that theme being bounced around in every tabloid and every show and they just stick around and it goes in that cycle. Once that starts to die out, they go and they pick another one. And anyone, it can take anyone, to just make a comment. And all of a sudden, it, it becomes big in news and they start to... Because if we look back at the whole, oh, Megan was abusive or, 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 or whatever to royal staff, that stuff was, was talked about and dealt with years ago but they said they needed something back again all of a sudden someone from the Daily Beast or that other person um, Chris whatever his name is uh, mentioned it so this is all cyclical it's planned and it's pathetic to be quite honest all right I'm going to Show this in a in in a in a bit of a creative way, I think. Just because you got a few black people that go to your church, that don't mean you ain't racist. Just because you done kissed a few black babies, don't mean that you ain't a white supremacist. As long as you shouting about pro-life, keep that same energy with the death penalty. As long as you talking about raising up arms, don't forget black. Don't forget that they trying to ban black books. Don't forget that they trying to stop the education of black history. Don't forget they trying to stop loan forgiveness from students that are trying to go to school. Don't forget that they trying to dismantle diversity, equity, and inclusion. Don't forget they don't want health care for your black mama and your own black grandmother. Miss me with all of that. The kingdom is at hand. Just because you got a few black people. Imagine you're watching a play. The stage is set. The lights are dimmed. And the audience is waiting. But this isn't just any performance. It's a carefully orchestrated production that's been running for eight years. The star... Well, Meghan Markle, the twist, she never agreed to be in this show. Let me take you behind the curtains of what might be the longest running production in British media history. It's a story about storytelling itself, how myth are made, how narratives are built, and how, in the age of 24-7 news cycle, a person's history can be rewritten in real time. Picture a typical Monday morning in a London newsroom. A photo crosses the wire, Meghan Markle at a children's hospital in Los Angeles wearing a stunning red Carolina Herrera dress. In any other context, this would be a simple story. Former royals support sick children. But that's not the story that will be told. It's like watching a magician trick, except once you know how it's done, you can't unsee it. Perhaps you might remember those character sheets you'd made for creative writing in school. You see, the British media has been crafting Megan's for eight years now. Let's flip through their version of Meghan Markle. In 2018, we got the bossy one. Picture the scene. 
Megan suggests changes to air freshener at her wedding. Translation for the media. Dutch is difficult, demands special treatment. 2019, the bully. Picture the scene. Megan manages her staff. Media translation. Palace in chaos. Staff flee from Duchess' reign of terror. In 2020, the angry one. Picture the scene. Megan expresses opinions. Media translation. Duchess displays fury in palace showdown. 2024, the poor decision maker. Picture the scene. Megan wears a recycled dress to a charity event. Media translation. Megan's latest fashion faux pas proves expert right. She doesn't know how to make any decisions. If you've recovered from that wonderful kid, just absolutely having the most joyful moment, and it's so contagious and wonderful. Um, I hope you you enjoyed enjoyed it as much as I I have. It's just puts me in a good state of mind. Um, so, okay, so let's chat about the echo chamber, how one voice becomes a thousand. So what we'll do is we'll zoom in on a single moment. And that single moment will be the recent Carolina Herrera dress incident. Let's call it that. Think of it as a, I would say a masterclass in modern myth making. Okay. So act one. Act one is the setup. The scene, Megan appears at Children's Hospital. Props, one red Carolina Herrera dress, previously worn. Initial reaction, positive. Public response is positive. Act two, the pivot. Enter stage right, the source, sources, you know, that person whose name none of us are allowed to know. Sources claim she wasn't invited. Plot twist, hospital confirms she was invited. Quick rewrite of the plot. But what about that dress? Act three, the amplification. Enters Tina Brown, dropping her, oh, it was the worst decision maker. She's the worst decision maker in the entire world. Did you hear me? She's the worst decision maker in the world. Am I getting paid for this later? Yes, okay. She's the worst decision maker in the world. Quote like a perfectly timed theatrical cue. Watch as one quote becomes hundreds of articles. Marvel as each article spawns thousands of social media posts. It's like watching a single raindrop become a flood. This is happening to Megan in real time. Every 
charitable act, reframe as self-promotion, every success recast as a failure, every silent interpreted as guilt, every statement branded as attention seeking. In other words, she can't win, no matter what. Now hang on my friends, no need to panic, no need at all, because this is where our story takes an unexpected turn. You think I was going to leave you there? No, 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 no. Unlike historical erasure of the past, this one is happening in the age of receipts. Yes, receipts. Every false story, every retraction, every narrative shift is documented, time stamped, and archived. Think of it as a true crime documentary being filmed in real time, except the crime is the systematic attempt to rewrite someone's history before it's even history. So, what's our role in this production? We're not just the audience. We're potential cast members. Every time we share a headline, react to a story, or accept a narrative without question, we are joining the performance. But we can also be the critics, the fact checkers, the pattern spotters. We can be the ones who say, hold on, I've seen this show before. Indeed, I have. And here is the plot twist. Here is the irony that would make Shakespeare proud. In trying to erase Megan's story, they're actually rewriting a different one, a story about how modern media works, how narratives are built, and how history gets written. So what's the next act? As this show enters its ninth year, the question isn't, just about how Megan's story will be remembered. It's about whether we'll remember how the story was told. We will recognize these same patterns when they're used again. Will we spot the next uh, systematic campaign before it becomes tomorrow's accepted truth? Because in the end, this isn't just about Megan, the Duchess of Sussex story. It's a story about power, about race, about media, about history, and about how all these forces collide in the digital age. And like all good stories, this one, isn't over yet. 
a big thank you to rr carter thank you so very much for the super thanks i appreciate it thank you thank you thank you and also a very happy birthday to duchess of success and duchess of success and is succeeding my friends congratulations on the wonderful book that she has out you can purchase it at amazon.com royal codes and happy birthday hope you're having a fantastic day actually you should be having a fantastic week or month happy birthday if you are not a subscriber to um ann's channel please go over there and subscribe i am sure you all are already subscribers <laughs> but if you're not do go over there and subscribe um she is fantastic happy birthday let's talk about red you know a color is never just a color red dresses have always carried significant cultural weight from the red lipstick of movie stars to powerful political figures wearing red suits this color is synonymous with confidence visibility and authority when Megan chose this particular shade, she was tapping into centuries of symbolic power. Red has been the color of revolution, of passion, of making oneself impossible to ignore. Think of Diana's revenge dress. Though black, it carried the same bold energy. Think of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, red lipstick, worn as her own form of battle armor in Congress. Think of Grace Kelly's red gown in To Catch a Thief, a moment when fashion and film collide to create cinema history. Megan's Carolina Herrera dress was designed by Wes Gordon, the creative director of the brand. You will remember him in the docuseries, Harry and Meghan. Carolina Herrera has long understood the power of the red dress. Her creations have dressed first ladies, film stars, and women who refused to be overlooked. As Mrs. Herrera once said, a woman in red is always noticed. For Megan, choosing Herrera wasn't just about wearing a beautiful dress. It was about aligning herself with a legacy of women who've used fashion as a language of power. Wes Gordon, the creative director, you did well. Anna Winter, fashion most formidable voice, has consistently praised Megan's intuitive understanding of this language. She's bringing modernity to the royal family, Winter noted in a Vogue interview. Her choices are sophisticated, unexpected, and most importantly, true to herself. This authenticity, Winter suggested, is what makes Megan's style so compelling and perhaps what makes it so threatening to those invested in maintaining traditional royal narratives. I'm looking for all the baddies all over the world. Low. Yeah, now back it up a little more. 
Yes. Now bring it up slow. You need a stage the way you put in on the show. Now grab your bestie by the hand and let her know she bad. Say grab a baddie by the hand and let her know she bad. Where my baddies at? I'm bad. You bad. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Keep calm, yeah, never in a rush. See a baddie with a big.